Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to take a look at an important marketing concept. It's called the price elasticity of demand. Now, we all buy lots of different products and services, but to what extent are we influenced in terms of that demand by the price? And what happens if the price changes? Do we demand more? Do we demand less? What would happen, for example, if any of those products on screen suddenly decided to increase their prices by 20%? Would you continue to buy the same quantity of Mars bars if you already do? Would you look to switch to something else? If Warburton's bread was 20% more expensive, would you try to switch to a, a cheaper brand? And what about Apple products? Are you like me? You'd pay whatever price Apple decided to charge. I'm very insensitive to any price changes. It's those kind of questions that we consider when we look at this concept of price elasticity of demand. What is it? Well, the key thing to remember about elasticity is it's about measuring how sensitive or responsive uh, demand is to a change in a variable. And typically we look at two variables. One is price, which is the subject of this video, and the other is income, which we'll look at in a separate video. So elasticity is all about the sensitivity or the responsiveness of demand to a change in a variable. And price elasticity of demand measures the extent to which the quantity demanded changes in response to a change in price. When we calculate price elasticity demand, we're going to be have to be comfortable with the, uh, the concept of percentage changes. Um, and the reason for this is that price elasticity, or as it's commonly shortened to PED, PED, is calculated by dividing one percentage change by another. We calculate the percentage change in the quantity demanded and we divide it by the percentage change in price. So PED is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. What we'll do now is we'll have a look at an example of that just to show you the calculations and consider the implications. So let's look at a simple example. Uh, we've got a product here, product X, and originally at the price of four pounds per unit, the quantity demanded was a thousand units. Now what happens when we change the price? Well, in this case, we've changed the price from four pounds to five pounds. The price has increased. And what's happened as a result of the price increase is that the quantity demanded has fallen. It's fallen from 1000 units to 800 units. In order to calculate the price elasticity of demand, we need to calculate the percentage changes in demand and the percentage changes in price. So let's look at demand first. Demand has fallen, it's fallen by 200 units, expressed as a percentage of the original demand, which was 1,000, 200 divided by 1,000 times by 100, that is a fall of 20%, a 20% fall in demand. What's happened to price? The price has risen by a pound. Originally, it was four pounds. So the change in a pound expressed as the original price, so one pound divided by four pounds, price has increased by 25% if you work that calculation out. So we have the data that we can use to calculate PED, a fall in demand of 20% as a result of an increase in price of 25%. So let's work the numbers. There they are on screen. Our fall in demand of 20, our increase in price of 25. We know that PED is calculated as a percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. We don't have to worry too much about the positives and negatives here. It's just about calculating the percentage changes. If we divide one by the other, we get 0 0.8 or minus 0 0.8 if you include the, the negative number. But the important point is in this calculation, the elasticity of demand based on price, the PED is 0 0.8. Now, how do you interpret that number? What does 0 0.8 mean? Well, this is a really useful table to remember and to consider as you calculate different price elasticities. A product is said to be said to be price elastic if when you calculate PED, it's more than one. Ignoring the minus sign, it's more than one. And what this means is that if PED is more than one, the change in demand is going to be higher 
than the change in price. Conversely, if PED is less than one, then the change in demand, the percentage change in demand is less than the percentage change in price. And if we have what's known as unitary price elasticity, where when we calculate PED, it's exactly one, it means that the change in price and the change in demand, both those two percentages are the same. Now, those PEDs have some quite important implications for businesses, and that's, that's why it's important for businesses to understand what their price elasticity is. For example, if PED is more than one, then if you increase the price and demand changes, in this case, falls by more than the increase in price, that would have the effect of overall cutting your revenues because the change in demand is more than the increase in the price you're getting. Conversely, for an inelastic product where PED is less than one, if, for example, you increase the price by 10%, the change in demand will be less than 10%. So therefore, over most of most ranges of that price changes, you should expect revenues to increase. But of course, it won't always happen. There'll come a point at which a, a price inelastic product becomes elastic because the price is simply too high. So that's how we calculate PED. One of the important things is just to remember uh, some of the factors that influence the extent to which a product has a uh, an elastic or an inelastic price elasticity. For example, what we tend to find is that products that have strong loyalty, in particular heavily branded, strong branded products and strong reputations, tend to be price inelastic. The, the business can raise the price, but actually the fall in demand will, won't be anywhere near as significant because the customers remain loyal to the product. Um, similarly, a price inelastic product that is really a necessity, something you have to have. Again, the demand doesn't change as much as the change in price because we simply have to have it. Uh, and same two, four products and services that we consume as a matter of habit. However, products that have lots of different alternatives or substitutes where it's easier to switch to a better priced product, they tend to have a higher price elasticity. They tend to be what's known as price elastic. elastic. So let's just look at a couple of examples of those uh, products that have uh, elastic demand, i.e. more than one, uh, tend to be products where there are lots of alternatives and it's easier to switch. So if Cadbury Twirl increases its prices by 20%, chances are I'd be looking for an alternative, maybe a Twix, maybe a Mars bar. Similarly, if Hovis bread increased its prices by 30 percent i'd be straight into the aisle where warburton's or tesco's or waitrose own brand bread was on display and i'd be looking for a, a slightly cheaper alternative unless i was so loyal to hovis that i accepted whatever price they charged and the same thing with newspapers that's why often you find newspapers engaged in price wars because customers are very sensitive to the price that they're paying for their daily news but there are loads of examples out there where actually the the, the demand is price inelastic. We mentioned habit. So, of course, those consumers who are habitual consumers of products like uh, tobacco are pretty inelastic. Well, their demand is pretty inelastic, regardless of what the government do in terms of uh, the taxes that are placed on cigarettes. Similarly, if you simply have to get from Phoenix to London each day, or you have to have a season ticket, there's not a lot you can do when the price of the season ticket goes up. The chances are you're still going to demand it. Or if you've got products that you simply can't do without in the leisure sector. So maybe your monthly Sky or BT Sports subscription. Or if you absolutely have to have a season ticket to go watch Man United or Harriet Town. Again, those are products that are price inelastic. You'll take whatever price the club decide to charge. Unless there's a point at which you say, no, that's too much. So what we've done there is we've done a, a, provided a brief introduction to this concept called price elasticity of demand. And don't forget, the key is to calculate it by calculating the percentage changes in quantity demand and the percentage change in price, and then seeing whether that elasticity is more or less than one.